Banana Bunch, you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of the Jungle Gyms Podcast. I'm your host, Mark. Welcome to the show. You know the drill here. Uh, this is the part where I thank you a bunch and all that good stuff and talk about some upcoming products. So of course, guys, we got the International Wine Festival coming up on November 9th. Tickets are still available. Get those connoisseur passes so you can eat. I was just talking with Chef Mike, who's doing a whole new spread for this. I'm really excited to eat his food. I'm really excited to eat a lot of food. Uh, it's kind of a problem, actually, but you're not my doctor. Uh, he won't watch this show. Um... Yeah, we've got all kinds of fun stuff. Before I dive in, I know you can see there's like a pile of goodies here on the table. And I always love whenever we do a tasting episode like this, when we've got a fun guest in, I always go to the managers. I'm like, hey, what's cool in your department? So today I got a couple good ones sent my way. I'm really excited about this one. I wish I had a blender in here. This is a brand called Live More Smoothies. So in this cup, see if you can see it. Oh, yeah. In this cup is a bunch of fresh frozen fruit. That's probably a bit of a misnomer, but whatever. Um, these are made in Chile. That's cool. You take the fruit that's in here, you pour it into a blender uh, with your favorite choice of liquid. So there's like a fill line in the back of the cup. I'm going to fill it with TC soda probably. It won't be a good blend. This is magic mango. So this one, for example, has mango, strawberries, cherries, grape, and goji berries in it. So you take this stuff, fill it to the line here with liquid, pour it in a blender, blend it up, dump back in the cup. You're good to go. It's got a sweet little straw hole in the lid. These are not 99 cents right now. I think this is one of the better deals in the store. You just have to own a blender. That's cool. Uh, you know, I made the THC soda joke, and we may end up trying some of these together on the show today. Um, but I've got from Seltzer 8. These are back in natural foods, so not in beer and wine. These are natural foods. Thank you, Brie. This is a 25 milligram Delta 8 hemp extract seltzer. It's black cherry flavor. Did that sound good to me? Um, we've got... This is actually part of the Jones Soda Company. This is Mary Jones, and I hear the root beer one's a killer one. So these are all pretty low dose. This one's a Delta 9. Uh, Delta 9 is a little closer to the real thing than Delta 8 is, just to give you a heads up. Um, yeah, uh, oh, that's funny. The photo just says, this isn't a rock. Love it. Um, that came in. This is a brand new set of gummy edibles that are back there. Uh, I have a feeling we may try these. I have a whole THC soda episode that we've already recorded that's coming out soon. So I may have to update my intro with some of these. But this is from a brand called Lumi. I picked this flavor because it was seasonally appropriate. It's sour caramel apple kush, which is apparently, on the, according to the packaging, a combo of sour apple diesel and white caramel cookie. Uh, 15 gummies in here. It looks like each gummy is 10 milligrams. So uh, also Delta 9. Pretty cool stuff. It's really crazy. I know I think about this all the time, how it's like, we used to just buy this at a parking lot from a stranger. Now I could go to the world's largest grocery store. And that's the way it should be. Damn it. So those are some of the big things that are in here. Uh, Lou's also got another crazy deal on these Amaretto chocolates. They look kind of like Ferrero Rocher, but maybe a little bit better, but this is 99 cents a bag too. That's exclusive to those of you that have the Jungle Gyms app. So before I introduce our guest, make sure you download the Jungle Gyms app. You get the weekly ad in there. You get weekly exclusive deals in the store. Uh, so you can just scan it right at the register and get an extra discount that the normies are just not taking advantage of. Uh, and then last but not least, of course, my favorite part, uh, you can see the five most recent episodes of the podcast on there. Uh, but realistically, you can do, there's a barcode scanner in there. You can find items. There's a map. So you can see where you are on the store. It's very handy. So you should get it. Uh, I'm starting my day off right now. And you'll see an episode with these guys coming up soon. But they got me hip and hooked on caramel water. Uh, it's like I got a little cap. It's like white people ramen. So you just push this little button in the top, which, of course, I can't now that the camera's rolling. There we go. Uh, but in it, and it releases... In this case, probiotics, like probiotic cultures, they'll tell you all about it soon, but what you need to know is it's delicious and here at the store. So on that, I'm pretty excited about this one. I've known our guests for a long time, not particularly well. I feel like today's the day we're going to actually really get to know each other a little bit, which is fun for me and fun for you. He's a comedian. He's a very funny guy. He is the host of the longest running show in Ohio, and we can't quite verify that, but like most claims... They're all bullshit. So on that, I want to introduce you to my friend Carl Smith. What's up, Carl? Not much. How are you? I'm good, buddy. Uh, how you feeling? First, let's just start right here. This is so cool. You'd posted online that you were doing. Let me see, make sure I got a good frame. Here we go. You'd posted online that you were doing a bunch of. You do everything, right? Maybe you should talk Too through much. this a little bit. You know, I get that. Uh, yeah. So I do illustrations for people. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get better at it. I think I'm okay at it. I think, dude, this came out great. Listen, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I'm, uh, it was a fun one to do because we were talking about what to do and you wanted like jungle-ish theme. Yeah. And we decided Jurassic Park. I loved it. 
Well, and uh, I, my whole thing is I'm always like, you can be mean to me if it's funny. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, lean into it. I love it. Dude, it came out so good. I'm very excited to hang this in the office. Yeah, yeah. You're, this is my second piece of art that's come in this way. Very nice. Yeah, the other one was from a child, but oh. she's very talented too. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'm probably better than her. You know, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like all of those years of living paid yeah. off. Yeah, one thing I guarantee with my, my art and anything is I'm better at it than a child. That's, uh, I heard that's actually how you're, <laughs> that's how you're promoting the comedy special you're yeah, taping. Yeah. It's coming better up. than a kid. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen a kid do stand-up? Yeah. I saw Amanda Bynes do it in a documentary once. Actually, she there, was kind of There's funny. a whole um, Instagram page. It's just kids doing stand-up, but they're all like, very clearly like forced to do it by their stage mom and oh, their like, parents write the jokes for them. Yeah. And then like every comment's just like, kill yourself. <laughs> It's like it's They're like that one's for your dad. It's though. the definition of what <laughs> what is bad about social media. Oh, for sure. Oh gosh, don't get me started because it's like the conversation I often have. People are like, "But Mark, you're good at it." And right. I was like, "That's not the same as no, loving no. this. This is a necessary evil." Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? I personally hate it, and I suck at it. I, I think you're decent at it because uh, because I think it plays to your style of comedy in general, right? You've got like a little of that like sardonic thing happening. Yeah. It's a, it, to me. Well, now that you're saying it out loud this way, to me, I was just always like, <laughs> Carl's doing this bit. Like, that was kind Yeah, of, I do a lot I mean? of bits on it, but, like, not anymore. Like, I'm so over it. I wish I could just delete it, but... Yeah. That's, like, the worst part about being in a creative space right yeah. now. It's like, you could just delete... Well, here, before we complain about the internet in the world, <laughs> yeah. let's at least get show promo out of the way. So you're taping at Motor in Cincinnati. Yes. Down and over the Rhine on Main Street, 1345 Main Street, I'm taping a comedy special. Um, November 2nd and 3rd. Um, the second is uh, Doors at 7, show at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And the third is Doors at 6.30, show at 7. Awesome. With bands afterwards. Oh, cool. Um, you can do Big Acid show too? No, I hate playing music live. Oh, yeah. okay. I wasn't sure. I just yeah. own your catalog. That is, well, I don't own it in that way. It's you know I mean. my least favorite thing to do. Oh, cool. Uh, is play music <laughs> live. Um <laughs> It will be fun. It's just going to be stand up, but the final version of the special is going to be a mixture of stand up and filmed sketches. Oh, cool! That kind of tell a story of my birth to death. <laughs> of course, I love it. <laughs> and you're working with um, I, I'm forgetting his name, but he shot all the future science stuff. Uh, right? Matthew Hontanosis, one you. of my okay. dear friends, very talented. Yeah. Um, I work well with him. I'm very excited. It's going to be very sur. The final thing will be very surreal and silly, and that's awesome absurd has this is this your first special yes that's awesome so this is like all my jokes from for 14 or 13 years wow really years, yeah. I, i'm actually kind of surprised you haven't done a special before this uh, i didn't feel ready that's good though um and i just want like now i feel like i'm at a point in life where i can just start retiring material like i'm like about to get married like there's like all this stuff that's happening so it's just like uh, all this old stuff is yeah probably time to go yeah, cleaning house a little bit yeah. it's like winter and i just want to change it up Good. like do new stuff has that always been like a uh, part of your mentality when it comes to creating comedy what do you mean like as far as like just creating like um an ever re not yeah ever repeating but like a, you know you're like i want to do something new i'm trying to push the envelope a little bit yeah and i get so bored yeah i have like too many mental illnesses to <laughs> <laughs> do like the same thing over and over again. <laughs> like any great entertainer, yeah. you have to be completely. So insane. even like getting ready for this special taping, every set I've done, I was like, I got to get this tightened up, and then I end up just riffing for like half my set because I'm so bored with like the material because I've done it for so long. <laughs> for and I know sure. I'm like about to stop doing it. But um, yeah, it's just like I mean, a lot of it's just jokes that like a 40 year old probably like shouldn't tell anymore, or it's just like. It's like just starts to feel like a little old. Sure. You know, where it's just like, well, like, because I have my life together. Yeah. Like, it's not like, and like, a, it's a bunch of jokes I wrote, like, from like 26 to 40. Right. It's just like, I'm a completely different person. And there's like a wide breadth of it where it's just like, like, I have jokes about my engagement and stuff, like getting engaged, which are like very new. Right. But for the most part, it's like, a bunch of jokes that I've told since the very beginning. And, I love that though. Or close to the beginning, like two years in probably. But. Yeah, because you it's crazy to think you've been doing it. I mean, 
it, I was trying to think today. I was like, how long have I actually really known Carl? I mean, it's been at least 10 years, I think. Yeah, I started I started in 2011. Stand wow. up, and I think we met shortly after that. Yeah, it sounds about right. Because I was always at the, like, back when I had less ambition, I was always at the club. Not, And I say less yeah. ambition because now I'm just doing stuff to do whatever. You know what I, I mean? Yeah, I met you at, like, a music open mic that you ran. Shit, really? I think, yeah. Oh, that's right. I, I forgot about was. that. Yes, and I, and I didn't really understand how to run a comedy open mic. Yeah. That's right. It was a... Uh, it's an axe throwing place now. Like all good comedy oh, shows, yeah. if it you was, throw axe uh, there now. It was <laughs> years ago. It was like Radio Down. Yes. Oh man, I loved it when it was Radio Down. Yeah, I saw a lot of good shows there, dude. Uh, okay, wait. I got to tell you this story. So the whole ra- reason I got roped into that thing is because I live in the area, and like at the time I was doing shows for Molly Malone's, who took amazing care of me. Probably one of the best experiences I've had as a creator in my entire career outside of Jungle Gyms, truly. Like, and I'm not saying that because I'm on the show. I'm just like, two companies have been good to me. Uh, Like, really good, right? And they were one of them. And then I guess it got wind of whoever the guy was that owned... I don't even remember what it was called. It was like a fire station as well. It's like a lightweight firehouse vibes. Yeah, and then... The ex, it's not even an axe throwing place anymore. I think oh, that that's oh, yeah. of course, because who wants to actually do? I did that once. I was like, oh, I'm just. That's it. a fad where it's done. <laughs> right. It has to be done. <laughs> it felt like it was done before it started. I was amazed. Like people were like, oh, we're gonna go throw axes. Like, what? Wait, why? Yeah. Don't you have a tree like, at in each your other? Life? Yeah, that would be. That cool. would be fun. And yeah. Like dodgeball with axes. Dodge axe. It's really yeah. popular overseas. It's called for keeps. Yeah. <laughs> I would play it. Look, that's what we're opening. That's actually what Jungle's opening in the back right now with all the thing. It's going to be crazy. It's just like medieval fighting. <laughs> Honestly, that'd be so yeah. sick. Jungle joust. <laughs> I just can't get over it. The dude that ran that place, do you know what he wanted to charge me to do Thursday night shows? In That would have been 2013, 14-ish probably. I think before that. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Because I, that, I think that was maybe how my name got tossed. You're right. Yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking when he asked me to run events there as, like, me, okay, he was just like, here's what my operating costs are for, like, midweek. He's pretty much trying to get me in there to do local bands and clear, like, a gr- just under a grand a night. That's insane. At the door. And then I was like, what am I getting out of this deal? He goes, well, you can have whatever after the door. I was like, what? dude, so you're not going to pay me. You're definitely obviously not paying hey, artists. Hey, for free. All artists That's too, right? It was so crazy. And he was an older man. He was nice. I know who he is. And yeah. I remember running into him at Kroger. This had been like probably a few months after that. And he goes, well, did you give it any more thought? And I was like, dude, you're going to have to, feed. like, first off, there's nothing in yeah. there. There's not like a, it doesn't look like you have kitchen staff. And I remember just kept laughing. I was like, bro, who is, t- where is this money going? Yeah. Do, do you have a gambling problem? And if that's the case, there's like an 800 number for that. Yeah. Not, you know, so I never ended up doing it, but I did do that open mic with them yeah. and uh, my buddy Chris Lee for a long time, which was fun. But I felt so bad that night that you came because I was like, oh, I don't know how to run a comedy open mic. And I feel like that's I look fine. like an asshole to this guy uh, that I barely know. That's my whole life with fun. comedians. That was back when I was just trying to do as many sets as possible. <laughs> it was funny. I think we had a full band show up that night, too, if I recall. If I not, it, yeah. <laughs> Covington did. Yeah, that was like, back then, like, there was, like, no comedy open mics at all. Yeah. So, like, com- comedians, for the most part, would have to, like, if they wanted to do stand-up on, like, a Thursday, they would have to go and do, like, music open mics and just bum everybody out. Yep. Nobody likes being surprised by stand-up comedy. Which is kind of Nobody. a bummer, and as somebody who has had that I happen it. once, no, it, it's funny because like I remember when I was doing more music myself, I remember going to like R.P. McMurphy's open mic or something like that, yeah. and there just being like a guy that came up there and he pretended like he was going to play music and then just did bad stand up, yeah. and I was so bummed because I was like, I'm here to laugh for sure, I'm down, yeah. but like he kept fe- feigning like he was going to play music, and I was like, don't do that, just That's come up and just kind of a funny bit if you do it right, you, right, right, exactly. But I remember the time. The audience was just not okay with it. Yeah. And I was just like, man, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, okay, where it's just like, yeah, it's like almost abusive. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? Are you fucking with us right now? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. it was. It, it's still a good time. That is funny. And now there's so many. Like, the comedy world has really kind of exploded, it feels like, in the last couple of years. Am I crazy for saying that? No, it's like, there's definitely a, a comedy boom. I think we're, like, on, like, the downturn spiral of it right now. Sure. Like, where it's as big as it can possibly get with, yeah. like, Nate Bargatze selling out arenas, like, all these arena comics. Yeah, like, people I used to see for free at Go Bananas are yeah. now like, hi, I'm the biggest star on the planet. I'm like, yeah, oh, my crazy. God. We threw up together at McLevy's. Right. You know? <laughs> so, like, I just think it's, like, it's unsustainable. Sure. And, like, all, but 
there's like all these big shows and like smaller shows are kind of falling by the wayside a little bit. But what, which do you really prefer in that regard? Do you have like, do you prefer like the smaller gigs like that? And like, you know, I mean, I mean, yeah, like not that I get like the bigger ones anyway, sure. but like not yet. The, I just see yeah, it like it's comedy's better in like low ceilings and intimate environment. It just is. Yeah, there's that like palpable thing. I don't yeah. know how to explain there's like it. An energy to the room. Yep. People are more like you hear the laughs better. Like one of the reasons I love Commonwealth Sanctuary, the new club in Dayton, Kentucky. Yeah. Sean's uh, awesome. Everybody, Sean's great. Yeah. But Nathan and Jacoba that own it are awesome. Um, they're getting really good comics in, but it's in an old church, so the acoustics are just like out of this world good. I bet. So like you could have like a half full room, and it just feels like amazing when you're on stage. That's cool. Like the acoustics are so good, and it just like really like pops when people laugh. So damn. Everybody I, should go to Commonwealth. I was Sanctuary. so excited because he brought in they brought in uh, Michael Ian Black this summer, and then I got hurt right before yeah, it, and I was like, oh cool, I was so excited about it, and then I just he was great. Yeah, um, I'm sure it was. Todd Berry's there. Oh no Friday. shit, really? Was, yeah, my buddy uh, Max Fine's coming with him from New York. To, oh uh, yeah, I, th- I I think I found Max through you and. Logan back yeah, in the day. Yeah. He's really funny too. Did, yeah, wasn't he writing dude. on some show or yeah. uh, start? Wasn't he on a show maybe or like a? No, his roommate Michael is on that. Um, Michael Rowland is on um, Animal Control. Okay, Fox, that's what so. I'm thinking about then. Yeah, yeah. They're both great. Yeah, like both. Huge very, Joel very McHale great. fan, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> Who isn't? No, I, I don't know. He's a very likable guy. Yeah, he's it. Smarmy. Right, exactly. Yeah. I kind of miss the soup sometimes. And just, I feel like as a culture, we still just need somebody angry at pop culture publicly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like that. It's kind of like all talk shows have kind of just gone to the internet. But. Which that's a weird thing, too. I guess that's all podcasts are now. I mean, that's how I pitched this. I was like, yeah. what if I did late night TV, but in a grocery store? Yeah. Like, Great, you're hired, you know? Yeah, like it is, it's all podcasts and reels and stuff. But yeah, God, crowd cool. work. How do you feel about that for real, Carl? What, what are your take? Well, just on like this modern, before we start diving into snacks and trying to regain some semblance of happiness in our lives, with the way comedy has sort of shifted as far as the consumer goes, right? Like, you know, we were joking outside before yeah. about like uh, things like the nature of how it's real. Like, I feel like now just having an audience, it's like I could f- cut a fake clip and put up 100,000 views with no effort. You know yeah. what I mean? And that bums me out because I like, want all talent to, I want talent to really be appreciated you know well it feels like none of it matters right now yeah like you can get like however many followers that doesn't matter for views on reels right and then views on reels don't matter to the people booking so it just like becomes just like this nebulous like whatever right and I just feel honestly bad about the state of entertainment yeah and like want to see like a pushback towards like physical media and um, like face to face promotion, which is how I've like mostly been promoting my special taping. So it's like, it, I imagine and well, and you know, we didn't really cover this before, but you're down to just like the last couple tickets being available to both shows. Yeah, right. Yeah, so like, that's all. So it works. I yeah. think the audio, you know, it's this weird thing I think about social media because we really should complain about it. Uh, actually, what do you want to open first? And then we can complain while we munch too. You want to do drinks first? And Let's then, go drinks first. I'm bringing back Wild Bills again today. Which flavor did you get? I got the orange cream. Cool. I uh, I really like this brand. They have like the savor untamed flavor. Uh, I actually would put that on if I was on a dating site. That would be my headline. Yeah. Uh, and then they would ask me to please put it down. Uh, but I really yeah, like about like, them. Is this about your- <laughs> yeah, it is actually. Um, <laughs> find out firsthand. I'm doing. I'm actually. That's how I do dating sites. Is just in person promotion. <laughs> I just put up flyers of things I like about myself. Uh, but they do. I. Always, they cracks me up on the side of the can. You see, it has tasting notes. Oh, I didn't see that. That's yeah, mine insane. is acerola cherry, black cherry, and vanilla bean. But they use pure cane sugar and they're caffeine free. Okay. Like I love a dreamsicle. I know this is exactly what I think it's going to be. Right. I, it's always funny when it is something like that where you're just like, mm, orange but cream. It tastes exactly the way I thought it might. One of the would. tasting notes is a made up thing. Dreamsicle. Yeah. And then orange and vanilla. Like that's a dreamsicle. Right. Exactly. Like, what were you thinking? I do think it's cute still. Oh, the black cherry goes pretty hard. Yeah. This tastes exactly how I wanted it to taste. And it's good. Good. Hell yeah. Well, I love that's a good start to the day. <laughs> good job, Wild Bill. We love them. Hope you don't get shot in Deadwood. Yeah, or, that's right. You know? Yeah. 
he's not my Huckleberry. This other guy is. I think we should bust out. Now that we got sodas, I feel like this yeah, is a Carl dude. pick today. This is uh, from a brand called Pork King Good. These are pepperoni pizza. Uh, what they call them? Fried pork rinds. So I thought it said something I, else. I love a pork rind. Yeah. Like, love a pork rind. You got to go in. And pepperoni. I picked pepperoni pizza because I was like, there's a decent chance this might suck. Yeah. No, I get it. Whenever I get samples, I always try the one I think I'll hate the most first. Yeah. That way, I'm like, well, the blue raspberry's good. What a surprise. What do we think? It doesn't suck. I kind of like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and it smells kind of like those old pizza snacks that we yeah. had when we were kids. Yeah, it kind of reminds It's like a spicier version of that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I want this giant one. Damn, that's crazy. It, like, actually tastes like pepperoni. Yeah. I mean, I guess there is pork product in there, so that makes sense. Yeah. This is, like, better than I thought it was going to be. It's way better than I thought. I, I've tried a couple of the Pork King Good stuff before, and all the flavors are... Pr- actually, I think that might be their thing, is all the flavors at first are like, I don't think I want that. Yeah. But I'd like to try it. And you're like, oh. It's pretty Pork King Good. Yeah. This is how we get, well, we talked earlier, this is how we get you with an Utz sponsorship. Yeah, right? yeah I love Utz. Love Utz. <laughs> Every Utz product is great. <laughs> and you start saying that. I was like, okay, Carl. And then you're like, have you tried these? I was like, oh, he really loves Utz. Because when, all right, when you're on the road, in particular going out east, yep. and then you start to get to the sheets and the Wawa's. Oh, yes, please. My home It's always Utz, and then you get bored of the same snacks you always have. Yeah. So then I try different Utz products, and it's my favorite thing to do. They're white cheddar popcorn rips. Okay. Like better than like any other white cheddar popcorn. I will definitely dive into that. It's great. These I extra was, dark pretzels rule. I, that's one of the only ones I haven't tried. Actually, funny enough, the two that you brought in today were two that I haven't tried. The crab chips are awesome because they're just Old Bay chips and what can go wrong. Old Bay is the best. Yeah, it really is. Um, And like I can't have shellfish anymore. So like. And there's uh, no crab in There's this, no right? crab in that. So it's, yeah. It's like a good uh, substitute. It's not really. Yeah, I like, no. <laughs> it's, it's nothing like eating crab. <laughs> we'll edit that part out just for the, for the inevitable No, keep it real. in. Yeah. Keep it in. It tastes nothing like real crab, but I love it. <laughs> They're good. They're kind of salty, but like in a good way. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forget what's the other brand back there. Hers, I think. They yeah. had tried, I forget where I was, but they had done an Old Bay no, crab Hems. one. Hems, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Hems crab I'm trying girls. to be. Crab. I'm trying to be very progressive now. Uh, I'm open minded. My chips. I think selection. they do have hers too. Oh, but, yeah. Oh, I'm. I'm yeah, hers, it's like crabs. <laughs> <laughs> the long short of it is the other ones suck. These are good. Yeah, these are great. They were kettle cooked. That was the only pro in the uh, in the com- competition. I love a kettle chip. I love the crunch of the kettle chip, but there's something about the texture of a regular Uts that I love. And I can just keep eating these. I think the catch was growing up, we were not like a chips household. You know, as a fat kid, they were like, how do we get him to be less fat? There's like probably no like, chips. yeah. So it was like all of those like rites of passage that everybody else had. I'm just like, I don't know what these are. So when I eat these, I have no, like, there's nothing in my brain that does that. Yeah. But it, because we had pretzels in the house, anything that's crunchy and thick yeah. always tracks. These are great. You describe these so well, by the way. They are a little salty, but like in the perfect way. Yeah. It's just in that moment where you're like, is that too salty? It goes away. It's like it knows. But then it also stops you from eating the whole bag in one sitting. For sure. It's, like an, it's salty enough that you're like, I'm good <laughs> for now, but I'm going to come back later. I'm in. Yeah. Well, I love I have, it. Yeah. The whole, the after the show wrap up of today is just ASMR of us eating all the <laughs> snacks left over. <laughs> Here's how much I love Uts. I've gone to their website to look at their merch. <laughs> as like, oh, let's get this man a shirt as like an anti-capitalist com- comedian yeah for sure i like chill so hard for the uts brand everywhere i go uts uts yeah they're looking they need listen like i said out there i was like they need a good spokesperson who loves them and I think you're the person. I think I am. I, I'd hate to force against your identity <laughs> with the anti-capitalism thing, but at the same time, there's a lot. At the part- same time, I'm broke, and it's society is society, and exactly. I need money. Right. I'll sell out in a heartbeat. Yeah. Uts, I will sell out in a heartbeat. Yeah, whatever. You, just keep the chips flowing. <laughs> keep those crabs <laughs> flying into the space household. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to actually request that you open the special darks, because I really do want to try those. Because, all right, the best part about every pretzel, right? Thank you. Is the burnt part of the pretzel. Yeah. Pretzel stick, the end. Thank you, sir. 
And these, it's a whole bag of them. These rip. <laughs> and they got a good texture in your hand, too, yeah. as silly as that sounds to say. It's a good hard pretzel. That's a great hard pretzel. Yeah. This and like a like a French onion dip or something. Would be oh, good. man. See, I'm just really sitting there sucking on a bottle of mustard. Yeah. Or nacho cheese. Oh, yeah. But like ballpark shitty yellow nacho right, cheese. Right, and these, if it didn't come out of an aluminum can, I don't want it. <laughs> I mean, don't call it queso. That comes in plastic. Yeah, That's yeah. gross. Oh, okay. damn. Dude, you just unlocked like a new. This hit in so many levels. This was a sheets purchase when I was driving back from... Uh, Cleveland one t- one night at like four in the morning. Yeah, I like left like right as, as soon as my shows were done because I thought I had to work brunch the next day. It turns out I didn't. Oh my gosh! So it was like probably like two, the headliner went like way over his time. I won't say his name, but he's awful. Yeah, um, can't wait to ask you when the cameras are off. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everybody I can that he sucks. Um, oh, awesome! So it's someone I've heard of, but he did an hour and a half, which is too long. Yeah, nobody wants to watch stand up for an hour and a half or two hours, I guess, with including my set. Um, I'd gotten a flat tire on the way up there. I I remember that post. It was awful. It was yeah. like a, the first night in Cleveland was like objectively like one of the worst <laughs> nights I've ever had on the road. I had to stay like like spend like 140 bucks on Ubers. Ugh. To like get there and back to my car. Sure. I was up till like two in the morning waiting for AAA to change my tire because I don't know how to change a tire. I'm an artist. Right. Uh, (laughs) 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 So like by Saturday show, like the late show, I was like, I'm going home. Yeah. Hilarities, great club. Um, I was like, I'm going home. I did, had to buy a new tire like that day. Yeah. So I just spent like more money than almost more money than I made. Of course. Um, but I did get well, the best pastrami sandwich I've ever had. At the Slimans? Uh, no, that was closed on Saturdays. Oh. Um, for the Sabbath. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> How? <laughs> Shabbat. <laughs> um, Larder's, Delicatessen, and Bakery. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The place ruled. Those and are the two I always hear to go to. And then I spent like 50 bucks there too because the sandwich is like kind of pricey, but yeah, delicious. And then they were pulling out cinna, Cinnabons and then like pouring the like the icing oh. all over it. And I was just like, well, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> but anyway, driving back, <laughs> like two in the morning, like around like Columbus, Actually, it's the sheets at exit 69. Um, I have a good sheet story coming up, too. I'm excited. But last time I was coming back, I was with Blake Hammond and Ian Squints, and we were, like walked in to get, get snacks at sheets. And then yep. uh, Osha Dwyer, our other comedy friend, Oh, that's so in. funny. <laughs> we were like, are we all just stopping here? Yeah, you're like, actually, they're hosting a mic <laughs> yeah. in the back at sheets. <laughs> I mean, they do it all. Yeah, Why not? We were just like all on the road coming home. It's OSHA's stuck. hilarious, too. OSHA is opening for my special on Saturday. On Saturday, and then Blake is Blake opening is Sunday. Sunday. I love Blake, too. And then, I've been trying to get Blake and Rand in here for, like, three years. Yeah. We're doing the thing that you see in the memes where you're, like, an adult, and you're just like, we should totally do this. And we're all like, hell yeah, we should totally do this. And then a and year will go by. Like, then I'll do this and be like, guys, you should totally come on here. And then I'll later be like, hey, we'd love to do that. And then it'll just... You guys both like to eat. You should do it. And I'm buying lunch, guys. I told Carl to come hungry. And I did. <laughs> Um, I'm so sorry. Sheets, exit 69. So I grabbed these. I was like, I was like, I have to try these. Yeah. And then had them. I was like, I've never won another pretzel. These are the only pretzels I buy for my house. Dude, these are like kind of frustratingly good. Yeah, please. Keep them at that side left. I eat them all myself. That's the hardest part of my job. Yeah. Is restraint. <laughs> it's on the guy. Like, it's just exactly what I personally want from a pretzel bite. Yeah. It's, it's like crunchy. It's got the perfect amount of salt on it. Because some of them, they'll get a little too salty. Like Grippo's brand gets too salty. A hundred. Dude, that's like the one thing. Look, as a non-native, a lot of the Cincinnati things were hard for me to grasp onto. It took me a long time to get to the Grippo's barbecue. Yeah. Excuse me, but I get it now. But the, the, the pretzel loops or whatever, they're my least favorite pretzel ever. They're so salty. And that's it. Anytime I got to like sit there and like... B- bust out the belt sander to get it to an edible right. whatever. I was like, I don't know if this no. is for me. Yeah. I mean, no shade because I eat those chips. I've got other grippos on the table. Yeah, yeah. You know what Which I mean? I'm excited to try. Yeah, me but, too. Yeah, I just want like, 
I don't need that much salt on a pretzel because like a pretzel is usually for like yeah mustard, cheese, cheese like French yeah French onion dip like other anything. salty things yeah like I I don't need that much salt on it's like a crazy overstep yeah by Grippos it's it's one of those things where I get that I you know I'm usually eating them raw right. But yeah. at the same time, you want balance in the dish. Do you yeah. know, as silly as that, the dish. You know what I mean? I'm like, here's a plated extra dark pretzel. Just imagine like fine dining plating. <laughs> They're it's just like, fanned out on a plate. It's like a smear of mustard across the plate, then like a like one pretzel. And I'm like, uh, can I actually get a usable amount of mustard, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the chef says this is the right amount, actually. Yeah. I have a cousin in Germany who's always getting mad, you know, because we're like the dumb American contingent yeah. of the family and everyone else is all overseas. And he's always like, why do you guys put mustard on your pretzels? I'm like, what am I supposed to put on it? He goes, they're bread. You put butter on them. And I'm like, I did. I find that, found that out recently. Yeah. The Germans put butter on pretzels. I bet it's delicious, by the way. It has to be. With yeah. like good butter. Yeah. And good and like a good soft pretzel. I love yeah. a soft pretzel, too. You know, have you I'm been like, to Tuba? Oh, my God. Kentucky? Yeah. I had uh, Drew on the show once to talk about it when it was like National Pretzel Day. Yeah. It was just one of those happy quits. I was like, oh, you're here and it's National Pretzel Day? Come in the office, buddy. Those pretzels are so good. Dude, all They're, of their food is so good. Yeah. I, it's like right in front of Commonwealth. So like, Oh, like, I don't think I realized it was that close. Yeah. It's like there's that like shared parking lot and then Commonwealth is like right there. Oh, that's crazy. So anytime I, I have a show there, I like eat at Tuba and like yeah. get like the chicken schnitzel and some potato salad and a pretzel yes, with the please. hot and spicy mustard. Oh, dude, it goes so crazy. So they did good. a trout special there a couple weeks ago. That I went and great. took my mom, and it was, like, insane. She's, like, she's like the skinny, health-conscious member of the family. Yeah. And it will normally not enjoy – not that she won't enjoy eating out. That's probably an overstep. But she's, like, you know, the idea of ordering a schnitzel, that's just never on her yeah. list, right? But I was, like, listen, they got this trout special. It looks crazy. Let's go try it. And then she blew my mind even further by getting there and trying to order the Swabinati, which is, like, their three-way yeah. play, which is so delicious, like by lentil. the way. Yeah, it's, yeah it's so good. And it blew my mind. I was, like, you ordered a dish with fatty things on it yeah. in public? It was crazy. But anyway, fish dish was crazy. We love the Raft family. Yeah. Damn, so that's a good double feature then at Commonwealth, too. Yeah, yeah. I really need to go over there. I feel so bad. It's great. I finally bought, like I said, I finally bought those tickets and then broke my ankle and foot. Yeah, you should. Yeah, it's like my favorite place to see comedy. That's and cool. Do comedy. It's like, I, I feel like the only time now, I, I, you know, you mentioned this before, but I think that is a bit of a thing because like all the shows I've been seeing are either arena tours or I'm at Go Bananas, yeah. you know? But there is, like you said, low ceilings. Yep. I haven't been heckled at Go Bananas. I got heckled at an, at a, at an audience last week. Oh, really? Yeah, it was crazy. I actually, this is, I'll tell you the whole story after the show because it's one where there's a few words in there that I wouldn't say publicly that that's why they made fun of me. Okay. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, it's crazy. Where was this? Indiana. Of course. Oh, I mean, of course. Where else do people say things that are tasteless? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, it was still funny. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the second worst, or third, actually, it's in the top five worst states. Yeah. Oh, Indiana. For, if for sure. Yeah. Indiana, Missouri. Uh, Arkansas has got to be on that list. Mississippi's on there. I, Mississippi might be number one. It uh, probably is. And, and, uh, <laughs> and ranked fiftieth in education. It's weird how that isn't works. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Wild. Wild that certain things make a state suck. <laughs> What's even crazier to me is I can't name anyone from Mississippi. I don't think I've ever met anyone from there. So I, that means one of two things: either a everyone that I've met from there lies about it, yeah. or they don't leave the state. I think it's mostly I don't leave. Mississippi fans, sound off in the comments. I, let me know how mad you are at this section. And then Missouri sucks because Kansas City Chiefs fans are the worst people alive. Oh, I love it. Even, <laughs> even more so than the team, the fans are so annoying. <laughs> the fans ruin everything for yeah, everything. A hundred percent. It's kind of unfortunate. Like Star Wars fans are oh, like, for sure. like, grow the fuck up. Yeah, you're like, and I get it as one that, as one of them. It's like that thing for, I, right. I like Star Wars. I don't really watch any of the new stuff. Right. But, like, the fans are such babies. Like In both regards. Like, in yeah. both ends of the pendulum, too. Yeah. It's, like, insane. Where I was just like, can I not just be angry over on this side? I was like, oh, we got to be angry both ways. But have you been on, th speaking of hating social media, have you been on threads at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I hate I hate read threads so often <laughs> i had a feeling we would be bonding over that <laughs> it's like right now i have like almost all my social off yeah. but i kept threads i was talking to someone they're like why'd you keep threads i was like i hate people on threads more than any other platform they're humorless oh. it is insane how they don't understand jokes 
And then we'll also just post like things it's like, why are you telling the world this? And they get indignant when people respond. Yeah. I'm like, you made a public post on yeah. a site that none of us know how it works. Yeah. I, I don't need to know about your the rogue polyp in your bowel, but you posted about that. I like reading the posts about people's bad dates. <laughs> like, there's like <laughs> an element of like <laughs> just like so glad I'm like out of the dating world entirely. <laughs> yeah. But then just like people may like, I met this guy on Hinge and then like they tell this story like there's like and like I, the guy's probably an asshole too, but sure. like they always seem like crazy by the end of it. Absolutely. Where it's just like like and then he ghosted me after like I said I wanted to get married in five years. Right. It's like this is your second date. Yeah, like that shouldn't even be a topic of discussion. Yeah. You should be really talking about like what you're eating today. Yeah. That's probably where you are. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like what's your favorite movie? Right. Exactly. Star That's Wars. <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars, but only the white ones. Like what? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a red flag. Yeah, it is a, exactly. Which is why I dress in red flags if I go out with people I haven't met yet. I'm like, can't say I didn't warn you. It's yeah, hard yeah. not to see. There's a lot of real estate over here. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, I like to. Uh, <laughs> my fiance is still finding things out about me. Probably she's like, oh, you're kind of like I had a night terror. Oh. <laughs> Kind of funny. Oh, sure. Ish. I've right. never had a night terror in my life. Yeah. And then like woke up just like screaming. She woke up just like, what's happening? Yeah. She was like, I thought somebody like broke into our apartment. She's like, you think if somebody broke into our apartment, I would scream like a cartoon ghost. <laughs> you think that's what I would do? I mean, I've never slept with you, Carl. I'm going to go. Yes. Maybe <laughs> though. <laughs> my dog got scared. My dog jumped Aww. up and was like licking my face and then like. Anyway, that was a new thing for our relationship. Red flag, probably. Sure. Well, no, I mean, a night. T so it's one of those things that, like, I never really know. You hear the expression night terror. Yeah, dude, eat everything. Hold on, let's bust. Oh, yeah. We got to find out about these. Let's, uh, before I go into my I don't know what night terrors really are thing, these are from Grippo's. These just came out recently. They have two. They have a tasty barbecue one. But I felt kind of like I was cheating on Grippo's eating a different barbecue chip from them. Yeah. And this, I don't really know what to expect. I'm hoping these are just... The only thing I like from Montgomery Inn, the Saratoga chips. Yeah, I'm curious about it. Cause... Um, well, visually, I think we got a winner. Looks good. They look great. Here you go, buddy. Nice and thick. Yes. Oh, man. I got a lot of thoughts about that. Positive ones, I think. <laughs> looks like an apple chip. It does. And it almost has the same texture. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's hard to explain. It's very thick. I'm trying to get a good crunch in the mic. It's, it's very, good. Yeah, it is good. I you don't know, love it. Right. It's a little under-seasoned. Mm -hmm. But then again, what do you always dip these in there? Barbecue sauce. True. So I think this may have done that same thing where, yeah, I probably wouldn't eat those plain by themselves all the time. But you give me a little dipper, I'd rock with that. Mm -hmm. They feel thick enough to withstand dip. That's probably the purpose of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like sitting here going like, wow, it's like an eighth of an inch thick. That's a lot yeah. for a chip. Oh, no. Well, I'll have to eat that one off the floor later. Yeah. Just Not crawl the under the desk and oh yeah, <laughs> I just crab down there, <laughs> <and just> sidle <laughs> under the desk and shove some more chips in my mouth. Those are good. Oh my gosh, we burned through so many things today. I just realized how many of these were chips. I found these. These are an international. I was curious about. We have a lot of um, chips from the Mediterranean. I think these are. Let me double check. These are produced. Yeah, these are from Ibiza. But I guess okay. you're supposed to say it with like a th sound, right? Ibiza. Ibiza, yeah. Um, yeah, sal de Ibiza. I don't really know what these are. They're just. It just says chips, and I thought that was also funny. It's just yeah, like let's, chips. Let's find out. This is a thing. This keeps coming up on our shorts because pretty much if you're on the internet and you're at all visible, people are really nice to you all yeah. the time, which is not true at all. Uh, they're mostly mean as hell. I joke half of my job is just dealing with the ramifications yeah. of people saying horrible things yeah. to me all day long. Um, but like the international chip bags, they tear this way. You know, like the American ones, you can see we yeah. open them wide. Yeah, it's the other way. It's like they open sideways. Oh, look at that. The gold interior on the bag. Oh, very fancy. That feels like that's for me. Curious. Oh, they feel crunchy. Mm. 
You're fine. Yeah. A little unremarkable. I do, one of the weird things I keep finding about some of the Spanish chips, there's another brand we carry called Torres. They have a bunch of wild flavors. Like we tried a black caviar one recently. That's cool. They're all, dude, they have a fried egg chip that is like the most insane thing I've ever tasted in that it tastes, ex- I'm not exaggerating, exactly like a fried egg. And weirder, there's no egg in the package. So I don't understand how they get it. And I don't Car- like that. Carl, I'm not exaggerating. It is one-to-one taste ratio. You're like, that is, it's insane. You're just like crunching on it. You're like, that is a weird texture for an egg. But then I kind of want to make a sandwich with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah, it's very weird. Oh, the one you'd hate. They have a sparkling wine flavored one. And why? Who is that for? You know exactly who it's for. You can see her haircut already. (laughs) I, dude, it tastes like somebody took the whole wedding buffet line and just dumped it into a bag. And they're like, make that food. It's like a little cake, a little bit of bad chicken with white sauce. It's definitely a ton of sparkling wine. It is. Some people love it. I'm just not on that list. That sounds terrible. But what's crazy is like the regular ones are awesome. Like they have one that they, they fry them, I think, in olive oil, which okay. gives them kind of like a silky texture, which is interesting to me. But I'm like, yeah, so long as you just eat the plain ones, they're, yeah. all, they're incredible. You know, yeah. they have like an Iberico ham one. I love Iberico ham. It goes pretty hard. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of ham ones, too. Um, speaking of Iberico ham, this cracked me up the other day. I went to uh, Jacob Dravino's new spot in uh, Finley there. Yeah. Uh, and then he has a whole... I'm going to go ham on the on display. He's like, would you like some while you're here? I was like, of course, I'd love some. Is that a, do you offer that to everybody? <laughs> that shit is expensive. A leg, yeah. Like a leg of that is like 1500 bucks. Is it really that yeah. much? We it's sell like them here too. And we'll get like, we had some good deals. I just want, listen, any meat that comes with its own sword, that's a meat oh, yeah. for me. And like pigs, they just feed acorns too. So it's like such a nutty ham. So good. I was talking with someone today about... A couple of years ago, I picked up a piece of this olive-fed Wagyu. Same concept, but then instead of feeding them acorns, they were just feeding these. And I don't even love olives. I love olives. I was curious. And it's still, to this day, one of the most interesting pieces of meat. I'm interesting yeah. in a positive way. I was like, I love it. It's like one of those flavors I can taste. So anytime I get to talk about it, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty good. That sounds cool. That it was really good. good, dude. All right, what else we got here? As we wind down to the other day, we got some baby ramen. Uh, you want to do the baby run? Yeah, bust in whatever feels good. I'm going to grab a tasting cup for us, too, while we're doing Sure. (laughs) Embarrassingly, like, not being able to open a bag on camera. (laughs) It's just like a whole clip of me not having the strength to open baby ramen. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I don't have like the best like grip strength. Anymore. No, it's okay. You're a comedian. You're an artist. You don't need it. You need. I just noticed oh, you're wearing a blood just... meridian hat that <laughs> rules so <Yeah>. much. <laughs> My joke is, uh, you know, they based a book off this hat. <laughs> I think Cormac McCarthy would be okay with that. What do you think of those? They're good. They taste like a garnish, but they're good. I, and that's a great way of describing it. Yeah, it's like one of those snacks where. I never was this kid, but I remember feeling like I knew a lot of kids that were this snack eater where yeah. they're just like, open the bag, grip it, and rip it. This feels like this was designed for that. Yeah. I think the flavor's the best out of these. They have a couple others. There's like a spicy tonkatsu one that I yeah. want to be the good one. Not. And it's it's okay. This is just... Have you had the hot and spicy chicken ramen flavored Funyuns? No. They're awesome. Are they? It's like what are that brand... Um, starts with an M. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Right? The ramen brand. It's oh like yeah, yeah, um, Marjan or whatever. Yeah, but it it's like a funyun, funyun yeah. texture, and just has like ramen seasoning on it. Like that a season, pretty good. It's awesome. There's really what I good. one it was of like one of those like I walked by it and then like took three steps back, grabbed the bag, <laughs> put it in my basket. <laughs> just rolled through the store. Yeah, that's so funny because I think about these. Every so often I'll find stuff like in some of the other, it's funny because it's not usually near the other ramen, but I'll find it in some of the other countries back there in international, but they'll have somewhere it is just like a little package. And then you dump the seasoning in there. Actually at that conference I got hurt at, one of the snacks I brought was from that company Bulldog that do the really spicy yeah, ones. Yeah. So it was literally just bricks of ramen, the seasoning packet you open up. That's Korean, isn't it? I think, yes, I'm pretty sure they are Korean. Um, 
until I say it out loud, and then someone writes me a comment to be like, actually, no, but no, I'm pretty In positive. Mark's defense, I said it first. <laughs> send all of your hate mail to And Carl I'm Spade. positive about it. Send, you can send, I thrive off hate. <laughs> it fuels me. I like, um, to look at, I like to do like direct takes to the camera. Oh, yeah, please. Anytime. This, it's your house too, Carl. <laughs> Sorry. No, I did I'm, a podcast recently, and this, the host complained about how chaotic I was, but... Really? I feel like you're not chaotic enough. I don't feel like you're chaotic at all. No, dude. Like, really? I I want to watch the episode. Can I ask who it was? Uh, Yeah, David Stewart. I don't think I know him. He has a music podcast called The Full Spin, and I just kept doing a bit where I was, like, taking over the hosting of it. That's funny as hell. That was intense. It was, honestly, I I won't lie. I was a little threatened by this. (laughs) It's got one of those weird, like, the resealable soda can tops. Have you seen these? No, this is my first time seeing this. So it's like, it's the, and then even weirder, you can kind of see in the can, there's like another lid inside. Like there's another layer. Yeah, you probably have to hold it to look at it. But if you look, see right there, like in the mouthpiece. Oh yeah. There's like another little piece of metal. I'm like, I don't know what the deal is with that. Do you want to try a little of this? I'll do like a like little sip. Yeah, little yeah. sip. I don't like want to get like. No, I'm not trying to have you have a trouble here. Crazy stone. Is that? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Just enough to taste it. I was told that this flavor was really, really good in particular, so I was curious about that. So this is root beer? This is root beer. Root beer, hemp-infused soda. The whole can has five milligrams of Delta 9, so Uh, that probably won't even move the needle, hopefully. But yeah, hemp-derived THC, zero alcohol. Yeah, it's so crazy. MaryJonesCannabis.com. Actually, it tastes like Jones Soda root beer. Yeah, it really it's does. Really good. I was like, oh, that's dangerous. I know we were talking about it earlier, but yeah, I Yeah, that's do- good. That's a good root beer. Yeah. 10 out of 10. We'll drink again. I'm going to pour a little of the seltzer in here, too, since Bree sent this in here. I've had a good, this is a good drink day between my caramel water, my yeah. Wild Bills. I really like the Wild Bills. Yeah, their really whole line's great. Do you want to try any of this, too? The seltzer? Yeah, I'll do a little bit. Okay. This should be even less potent. This is Delta 8. They say 25 milligrams in the whole can, but, you know, they were telling me, they're like, it's not as potent as the Delta 9 yeah. stuff. I can taste the distill it a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, this is, I mean, I guess the problem with all seltzers in general is it yeah. just tastes like, especially flavored ones, where it just tastes like flat soda. Right. That's a good point. Damn, I think you just not flat soda, like watered down soda. But no, yeah. watered down soda. Yeah, it's like you put ice in it and you came back and you're like, oh, it's still fizzy, yeah. but not as flavorful. You can taste the weed in that one. Yeah, for sure. Like well, that's that's it's. By the way, I do think it is overall a pretty good for a seltzer. Yeah, it's not bad. But I think the catch is now. I'm worried. I, you know, I, look, a lot of people. Well, here's what they probably love about this. There's like no calories in this. Yeah. You could just sit there, rip this, and then eat whatever you wanted. So maybe a good move. I think because I am a disgusting human being. Now that I know you can get these in soda form, yeah. that's going to ruin my life. Yeah, Because all I've ever wanted was I was like, I remember this thing. Well, not that it was Coke Zero at the time, but I was like, if you can just make me a can of Coke or whatever that later made me forget about the troubled relationships in my life <laughs> or hyper fixate on said troubled relationships, right. I'd be in for that. And yeah. so now they're kind of doing it. I mean, like Ur- you've seen what Urban Artifacts doing with their whole line, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. those are good. Too. And they've got them on tap now. It's crazy. Yeah. What a wonderful life. Um, what else should we try while we're here? Is there anything else you're super excited about that we've got uh, on the lineup? Did you want to do that chocolate bar you thought was funny? Oh, yeah, this is funny. Oh, wait, are you, yeah, I don't want to do an edible. Okay, that's right totally now, fine. Yeah. No. Weak. That's, <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, Can so you imagine? I have to drive back downtown? No, I know. I can't admit. I, honestly, I feel bad. And I, You know, the worst ones I feel bad, maybe it's because I don't really drink alcohol much anymore, but like you'll have like the alcohol gas, and you're like, great, well, I'm driving back to Indianapolis. I was like, bro, you just poured like four espresso martinis <laughs> out of that thing. Like, see ya, bye. Yeah, I'm like, okay, well, like, huh, huh, please don't. Uh, <laughs> and I said it on camera, so we're good. Uh, no, this one I just found back in International today while I was hunting stuff down. Let me see where this is from. This is a product of Switzerland. Um, but licensed by Nestle in Canada. But it says here, there's a, a little, uh, thankfully, I didn't have to flex my high school French. Uh, Macintosh's coffee is made, toffee, excuse me, is made with simple ingredients like butter and sugar and has no added colors or flavors. Okay. But I was excited because the packaging on the box, it says it here, but it's hard to see. On crack, poor Mac. And then it just on the, in the English translation says, smack the Mac. So I think we're supposed to break this and then we open it and try pieces. Okay. You want to hit it? Sure. How do you feel? Are you feeling aggressive today? Like that? I think so. To break up? Yeah. 
Let's find out. Now you open it. Hell yeah. It's teamwork. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Finally, we can work together. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. There you go. Oh, it looks like good toffee, though. My Dennis is going to be horrified by this. Which is crazy because he watches the show all the time anyway. You should have that Carl guy on. <laughs> He's a comic. Is he really? I don't want to say his name, but. But is he good? Yeah, he's great. Oh, okay, cool. I just don't think he wants Dennis people to know he's a comic. It's, that's got to be a weird. You know, I'm glad I haven't really had that in my career, or I just haven't listened to it. Because I remember, I always think of a friend of mine who tries to come around a lot now, who about 10, 15 years ago said to me, Mark. I'm trying to start a business. And I'll tell you what his business is afterwards, and you will laugh a billion times harder at this We're story. Who it is too. Oh, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, go, I can't be seen with you on social media. And I was like, what? And like, I'm not like insane. Even back then, I was just kind of being myself. I was like, this is what social media is supposed to be for. Yeah. It's like my diary, and you're allowed to read it. Yeah. You know? And... Um, it's very funny now because things obviously, I think I was right. I was like, yeah, I should just be myself. And then eventually right. this happens. And uh, yeah, I think about that honestly every day of my life. So when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, I can't imagine being in a line of work where people are like, we hate what you do when you're not here and we're judging you for it. It yeah. makes you worse at your craft. And we might fire you for it. How fucking crazy yeah. is that? It's like insane. I'm not going to finish this. No, I don't have to. It's, it's the good. flavor's great. It's so, I, I'm going to. You got to put it in the edible drink now. Make a cocktail, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Just like sugar the rim or something. Yeah. <clears throat> it's actually citric acid. It's going to suck. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh, as we wrap this up, dude, what are what were your uh, what were your favorites today? Where did you did anything get dethroned or are you still loving your classics? Honestly, what are you getting at the okay. sheets in 69? So. I am biased, but my favorites were the Utz's. Bro, these pretzels yeah, I, I are world, frustratingly bro. good. Out of this world. Good. I'm sending them your contact info. The most surprising one was the pork rinds. Yes. Which I was not expecting those to be as good as they are, but they're mm. awesome. Um, <laughs> this is so hard to eat still. I know. It's so, I was like, this <laughs> is such a bad thing to this have This is going to take podcast. like 45 <laughs> minutes. We should have opened it first. Now I know. Um, the Grippos. <laughs> Would be good with a dip mm -hmm. of like a barbecue sauce or a um, any sort of sauce. <coughs> I feel like barbecue. Uh, it sounds barbecue good. is like the classic. Yeah, and then all the seltzers, the root beer seltzer. I would like drink that and watch like a horror movie. Oh, you know sounds what I mean? good. Get a little stoned, watch a horror movie. Do you have a favorite uh, for this time of year? I Since mean, the weird. thing is the best one of all time. You are absolutely... Damn, I should have worn my Japanese The Thing shirt today. I forgot it was um, in good company. The Thing. I always watch... Uh, me and my fiance always watch Hellraiser every year. Okay. Classic. Um, what do we see? Oddity? We saw that in theaters. That Did was you really love good. It? Okay, I was, I was curious about that. Do you see The Substance yet? I haven't seen that yet. I, I really want to see that really bad, too. Yeah. I love body horror movies. Yeah, I'm always like, if you give me a little mild Cronenberg vibe, yeah. I'm in. I just need to be in the mood. The reason I haven't is that I just haven't been in the mood for that at the moment. It is it is one of those things, though, that like if that is even like if it does that, th if it gets under your skin, pardon the expression, yeah. I get it. Yeah. It doesn't like, I'm never bothered by it. I just like want to be in the mood to enjoy it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, of course. Like, Gore does. Like, it's just like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. You know. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, and what else do you, we always watch Halloween, obviously. Of course, yeah. Um, but the thing is like my big one. It's I go so on like good. a big carpenter kick in general. Yeah. Like uh, Prince of Darkness. And I was just going to ask about that one too. That one's underrated. I agree. And I saw it way late. There's like a couple little silly yeah. things about it, but like it's still so good. Yeah. You know, there's just like, we talked about the mood, the vibe scores. in the room. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Sometimes they are very funny, his yeah. scores. I mean, what was the one I watched recently? Uh, In the Mouth of Madness. I love that movie, too. Me, too. I love it. The music is hilarious. His fake yeah. uh, his fake Enter Sandman towards the end is yeah. probably one of my favorite. I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to laugh at this. I love it so yeah. much. It's, it's so, so good. fun. It, dude, it's a great movie. Sam Neill rules. Yeah. Sam Neill, an actor who, uh, we could do a whole separate episode about the movies probably. Sam Neill, though, an actor who you like should take seriously. But it's funny how much like 
schlock genre work he did early oh, on. Possession? I, dude. Which rules? Oh, my God. Yeah, I would, just got another. Actually, that was one of the only good Threads experience I've had was talking about that movie with That's someone awesome. I've never met. Otherwise, it's just like, do you know everything's terrible and you're awful as well? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I have a mirror. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. I already think this. I don't need <laughs> it to be reaffirmed by a psychopath on the internet. <laughs> That's where I get all of my good validation from, Carl. <laughs> well, all kidding aside, dude, thanks for finally coming to do this. I'm glad we actually got to hang out a little bit more. I'm looking forward to the special. I'll be there on the 3rd if you guys want to hang out. Yeah, uh, but tickets. both nights are great. OSHA's hilarious. Blake's great. You're yeah. funny. Logan Lotzenheiser's hosting Aww, both of them. My that's, best friend. Now I can't go. My <laughs> best bud for life who is very funny, but he'll probably bomb. Yeah, classic. No, no, he's very. I remember coming to see you guys do one of the motor maps one night, and he was just like, I haven't done this in forever. And he was fucking great. Yeah, he does that a lot, where he's just like, he hardly ever does stand up, and then when he does, he's frustratingly good at it. Yeah, that's awesome. He's a funny guy, too. But we did Future Science together, our sketch show forever. And so cool. Very fun. And you just did a recent, didn't you do a like a yeah, reunion? Yeah. yeah, we did a 10 year anniversary reunion so cool. show. Me and Logan both lost our voices. Oh, my God. Because we did a sketch where we were just like Amish people protesting multimedia comedy <laughs> and didn't use microphones. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And, and like <laughs> I could feel like after that sketch like my voice like going and then I was just like like well okay then I woke up no voice at all. Yeah. And I went and like I went to the grocery store to get some like tea mm -hmm. and uh soup and stuff and I ran into somebody I know like but not well but just like a regular at the bar I work at and I went to shake their hand and I realized I had like fake blood all down my arm and I like <laughs> didn't have a voice and I was like I look like a crazy person that's amazing this is it yeah that's 2 a.m. and a sheet's energy <laughs> yeah yeah oh yeah, I like looked down and I was just like I'm sorry I can't really explain it now. <laughs> follow me on Instagram it'll make more sense <laughs> Uh, I forgot to tell you this. The, my most recent sheet, well, I, aside from the week this weekend, but I was on my way to a, there was like a vintage and retro toy show, and I stopped at a Sheets off Sharts Road. <laughs> and I was like, dude, someone at Sheets rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, there's a Sharts Road. Springboro, Ohio. Yeah. Normally you don't want a Sharts in your Sheets, but. No, but that week I took it twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carl, I'm so glad you came in. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for looking forward me. to the show. Of course, dude. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to your UTS sponsorship coming up. I hope so. <laughs> I'm so psyched if that ever happens. Well, on that note, folks, thanks so much for watching the show. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate the support. If you're listening along on the audio platform, that's very cool. But I would love to grow on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube so you can watch us eat the snacks. And in the meantime, come in the store. Get your Jungle Gyms app. Get some of these snacks on sale. Uh, Lou will be so happy if you try the, uh, what was it? Live more smoothies. I almost said that. I almost said love more. I'm trying to do both. On that, I'll and see you. laugh more. <laughs> yeah. eh. Live more, love more, laugh more. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the person who is, uh, what was the product we said? Who is it for? Uh, yeah. She's coming in to buy. Yeah. <laughs> she's coming to buy that sign from you now. Uh, on that, folks, you can catch me out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.